let's go to something that when I found out recently, so I, I've known that you've done a million things, but one of the things I wasn't aware of that you had a role in Ample. And I, before you interrupt me by minimizing your role in it, <laughs> which you- Ample which is it, for minimizing functions. <laughs> yeah, minimizing functions, right, exactly. Um, I, I, can I just say that the elegance and abstraction power of a Ample is incredible. When I, when I first came to, to it about 10 years ago or so, uh, can you describe what is the Ample language? Sure. So Ample is a language for mathematical programming, a uh, technical term. Uh, think of it as linear programming. That is setting up systems of linear uh, equations that are uh, of some sort of system of constraints so that you have a bunch of things that have to be less than this, greater than that, whatever. And you're trying to find a set of values for some decision variables that will maximize or minimize some objective function. So it's, it's a way of solving a particular kind of optimization problem, a very formal sort of optimization problem, but one that's exceptionally useful. Yep. And, and it specifies, so there's objective function constraints and variables that become separate from the data it operates on. Right. So the that kind of separation allows you to well, uh, you know, put on different hats. One put the hat of an optimization person and then put a, another hat of a data person and dance back and forth and, and also separate the actual uh, solvers, the optimization systems that do the solving. That you can have other people come to the table and then build their solvers, whether it's linear or nonlinear, uh, convex, non-convex, that kind of stuff. So of what is the to you is maybe, maybe you can comment how you got into that world and what is the beautiful or interesting idea to you from the world of optimization? Sure. So I preface it by saying I'm absolutely not an expert on this. And most of the uh, important work in Ample comes from my two partners in crime on that, Bob Forer, who uh, was a professor of and in the industrial engineering and management science department at Northwestern, and my colleague at uh, Bell Labs, Dave Gay, who was a numerical analyst uh, and optimization person. So the deal is linear programming. <laughs> Preface this by saying, <laughs> let's stay with linear programming. Yeah, yeah, linear programming is the simplest example of this. So linear programming, as it's taught in school, is that you have a big matrix, which is always called A, and you say AX is less than or equal to B. So B is a set of constraints, X is the decision variables. And A is the, how the decision variables are combined to set up the various constraints. So A is a matrix and X and B are vectors. Um, and then there's an objective function, which is just a sum of a bunch of X's and some coefficients on them. And yet that's the thing you want to optimize. Um, the problem is that in the real world, that, that matrix A is a very, very, very intricate, very large and very sparse matrix where the various components of the model are distributed among the coefficients in a way that is totally unobvious to anybody. Um, and so what you need is some way to express the original model, which you and I would write, you know, we'd write mm -hmm. mathematics on the board, uh, the sum of this is greater than the sum of that kind of thing. So um, you need a language to write those kinds of constraints. And Bob Forer for a long time had been interested in modeling languages, languages that made it possible to do this. There was a, a modeling language around called GAMS, the General Algebraic Modeling System, but it looked very much like Fortran. It was kind of clunky. Um, and so Bob spent a sabbatical year at Bell Labs in 1984. And uh, he and it was in the office across from me and... Uh, it's always geography. And uh, he and Dave Gay and I started talking about this kind of thing. And um, he wanted to design a language that would make it so that you could take these algebraic specifications, you know, summation signs over sets, and that you would write on the board and convert them into basically this A matrix. And then pass that off to a solver, which is an entirely separate thing. And so we uh, talked about the design of the language. I don't remember any of the details of this now, but it's kind of an obvious thing. You're just writing out mathematical expressions in a Fortran-like, or a, a, sorry, an algebraic, but textual-like language. Um, and um, I wrote the first version of this Ample program, uh, my first C++ program. <laughs> and- uh, That's written in C++? Yeah. Ample. Wow. 
And so I did that fairly quickly. We wrote, it was, you know, 3,000 lines or something, so it wasn't very big, but it, it sort of showed the feasibility of it that you could actually do something that was easy for people to specify mm -hmm. models and convert it into something that a solver could work with. At the same time, as you say, the model and the data are separate things. So one model would then work with all kinds of different data in the same way that lots of programs do the same thing, but with different data. So one of the really nice things is the, the specification of the models human, uh, just kind of like, as you say, is human readable. Like I, I literally, I remember on stuff I worked, I I would send it to colleagues that I'm pretty sure never programmed in their life, just, just to uh, understand what the optimization problem is. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, how hard is it to convert that? You said you, there's a first prototype in C++ to convert that into something that could actually be used by the solver. It's not too bad because most of the solvers have some mechanism that lets them import a model in a form. It might be as simple as the matrix itself in just some representation. Or if you're doing things that are not linear programming, then there may be some mechanism that lets you provide things like functions to be called to, or other constraints on the model. So, uh, so all Ample does is to generate that kind of thing and then solver deals with all the hard work. And then when the solver comes back with numbers, Ample converts those back into your original form. So you know how much of each thing you should be buying or making or shipping or whatever. Um, so we did that in 84 and I haven't had a lot to do with it since, except that we wrote a couple of versions of a book on it. Which is one of the greatest books I've ever written. I love that book. Uh, I don't know why. It's an excellent book. Bob Forer wrote most of it. And so it's really, really well done. He must have been a dynamite teacher. And typeset in LaTeX. No, no, no. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> I remember liking the typography, so I don't know. We did it with DROF. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, exactly. You're too uh -oh. young. Oh, boy. Uh, I That's... think of DROF as, as a, uh, a predecessor to the tech family of things. It's a formatter that was done at Bell Labs in this same period of the very early 70s. Uh, that predates tech and things like that by mm, five to 10 years. But it was nevertheless, just I'm going by memories. It was, I remember it being beautiful. Uh, yeah, it was nicely done. Yeah. 